Hi, everybody, again, and welcome to this webinar where we will discuss uncovering opportunities with scenario planning. Uh, this is your host, Kevin Sullivan. I'm a sales director at Jetox, uh, based in our go to market headquarters for North America in downtown Boston. And on with us today is Taylor Jackson, who is a senior consultant on our solution advisory team. And Taylor will be going through uh, the demo, which is why uh, I believe most of you all are here. Uh, so let's get started. And before we jump into the webinar, let's do something fun. Let's do uh, a couple of quick polls to understand where everybody is coming from uh, today. The first poll that we're going to do uh, is how often do you revise your yearly budget? Uh, and so there should be a poll that pops up here on the screen soon. Your options are more than monthly and or ad hoc, monthly, quarterly, or less than two to four times a year. So we will give everybody a chance to respond to the poll and then we'll share the results. All right, so it looks like it's the uh, majority of the answers there are less than two to four times a year or quarterly. Um, and so, you know, hopefully with what we see today, we'll be able to increase that number um, as it becomes more of an efficient process. And I believe the next question is focused around uh, the efficiencies of your planning. Thanks, Taylor. Okay, awesome. So let's move on to the next poll, which asked how much time is wasted on manual interaction or effort in the planning process? Is it less than five days per month, five to 10 days per month, or more than 10 days per month? Let's give everybody a minute here to, uh, to respond to this one. Thanks everybody for the participation. How is this poll looking, Taylor? Looking pretty uh, consistent with what we see. Um, less than five days a month being the leader there, followed by five to 10 days uh, and a close second. Um, so just the, the amount of effort within planning and versioning um, can see those uh, increase incrementally um, as you start to wrap up some new versions. So that will really set the stage for what we'll discuss next and how you can optimize these processes becoming more efficient and more accurate. Excellent. And as Taylor said, to set the stage you know, for this webinar and demo, let's take a look at some results from a recent BARC survey around the future of planning. Uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with BARC, they are a leading analyst firm for business software. They run surveys with thousands of your peers in finance uh, worldwide. Uh, and so you can see that this survey proves uh, this trend and our experience at Jetox that planning is becoming an ever greater challenge. Uh, for example, 40% say lack of efficiency due to high effort in prep and execution, the lack of confidence in the accuracy of planning results at 33%, and results are often outdated and therefore useless at uh, 32%. And the reason uh, why it's, it's such a challenge is that the traditional planning, budgeting, forecasting and reporting process is inefficient, right? Disconnected spreadsheets with impossible versioning control slow down the process and getting data out of CRMs and ERP systems can be cumbersome. You might have a process that you can do a handful of times per year, but when the process is complete, is that information still relevant, right? And 
potentially the worst case scenario is you discover a mistake in the model and have to start over. Um, you know, people will get frustrated. Decisions can be poor or or, sl or too slow to take, uh, let's say. So transitioning from that traditional FBNA to uh, a more modern integrated business planning process brings many benefits and efficiencies to the business or organization. Uh, for one, forecast frequency increases from annual planning or quarterly forecasting to continuous real-time planning and forecasting from high-level planning to granular operational models and solutions, from siloed data sets and separated business units to integrated and extended financial planning and analysis, from a simple top-down or bottom-up plan to driver-based planning that allows for important organizational driver-based logic for increased accuracy. And also a dependency uh, on the expertise of planners can be removed uh, to using AI or different algorithms to help predict and identify patterns in data. Before we jump into the demo, let's take a look at some of the benefits around scenario planning at different levels, right? At the group level, you can apply strategic drivers such as market growth and interest rates, which can steer initiatives. At the company level, easily identify investment opportunities like, um, let's say, new projects or new products. And at the department level, plan around price, margin, salaries, and so on. And when you incorporate scenario planning and simulations, it becomes simpler to define business and organizational strategies, apply specific operational drivers, and easily revise forecasts to enhance performance. Great, okay, so now why you guys are all here, guys and girls. Uh, Taylor, I'm gonna to toss it over to you for our scenario planning demo and then we'll close it with a couple of a uh, couple of more slides and questions at the end. Sure thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Kevin, could you confirm that we see a, a dashboard in front of us? Yes, sir. Awesome. So um, this may be your first look um, at the Jadoc software, and what I've opened up is a, a finance dashboard. Some of the things you get out of the box with Jadoc right today, with the ability to have multi-dimensional filters, so we can change the months, change the periods in which we want to look at, and also compare our many versions with the different scenarios that we're running. So that will be the focus of today. But we can also, you know like we're doing now, take a look at previous year. So we can leverage those actuals, compare them to our different versions, our different budgets and our different scenarios, uh, graphically represent those, zoom in, zoom out, filter, drill up, roll down, or drill down and roll up to get into the details of your data and even drill through to the transactional data as well. Um, and so what we have here, we're just looking at our budget data that you know maybe our different departments and our different planners um, and business units have begun planning, um, and we're comparing that to the previous year. Um, but if we want to take a more strategic approach, maybe create a strategic plan or a worst case plan, we'll see that we haven't completed those. So to set the agenda for this demonstration, we'll do a uh, kind of ad hoc type strategic planning. And then what we'll do next is we'll iterize and revise the budget that we're looking at here, this initial budget version that we're comparing. Uh, to our previous year for. And so I'm going to very quickly just navigate to our strategic planning uh, screen here and set the stage for what this screen um, is intended to be used for. And so what we have here is we're going to be building out a strategic plan, a best case and a worst case plan. So very quickly, we're going to model out three different scenarios. And we have quite a few tools to assist us with that. Um, we can, again, grab our previous year's actuals and seed our plan. So maybe I'll add that to our strategic case and I'll add it to our best case as well. But then also we see that a prediction is run with upper, middle, and lower bounds. Um, a little bit of a feature highlight from some of the tools that are native within Jedox is going to be our, our AI-assisted planning, where we can you know, look at your historicals, project out different time series, methodologies um, and utilize the one that's most accurate, but we can also incorporate different drivers. And so within these different drivers, 
It could be internal data, such as your marketing spend, NPS scores, but we can also leverage external third-party data, whether it's currency rate projections from a bank, weather information, or raw material price indexes based on the goods that you're selling. So you're not limited to just your historicals. You're not limited to just um, internal data, but you can also connect to those third parties, leveraging our integration capabilities, bring those into your plans um, and create more accurate predictions. Uh, when you leverage these drivers, it's kind of like, uh, I like to use the bowling ball analogy to where our prediction um, is the bowling ball, we're going to roll it down, try to get a strike, a very accurate prediction. And then we have these drivers that can act as guardrails to push and prod the ball to a more accurate result. And so that's what we've done here when we've run that prediction of 61 million here. So I'll add that to the worst case plan just so, see, just so we can see um, some differentiators between our different plans. And then it comes into adding in those different scenarios, those different initiatives or potential hurdles that we may have to overcome this year. And from here, uh, you can add as many as you'd like um, and leverage <clears throat> data to start incorporating those to your plan. And as we start adding these different initiatives, we'll be able to see it graphically represented here at the top, but also broken out and translated into a mini forecasted P&L so that you'll know where you'll end up at the end of each year. And so what I'm going to do now is perhaps there's a potential acquisition that we're going to make uh, here in the year of 2024. And I come in and I can model this out. I can model it out in a driver-based format or even more of a P&L format like it is here. And getting your uh, team to be able to do these sorts of scenario plannings more efficiently, a lot of that comes with leveraging the data that's already in the system. And so what we can do here is we have a similar acquisition from 2022. We can copy that information in and maybe based on some initiatives, we know it's going to be 10% more profitable. I can very quickly update those numbers, add commentary along the way to help explain away why we uh, came to certain numbers. And we can close this out. And now it's immediately available for us to add to our strategic plan. So we see that line shift up. We see the numbers update as well. It's also a great outcome. So we'll add it to the best case. And potentially there's some uh, supply chain shortage we want to model out for in our worst case. So very quickly, I can add that to our worst case and start going through this, maybe some ESG initiatives as well as a part of our strategic um, initiatives, and we can start adding those there. And I'll just build out our best case a little bit better here. So now that we have uh, our three different versions we created, as well as the prediction we ran, um, and then we'd be able to um, look at those um, on a different level as well. So we could navigate back to our finance dashboard where we were originally comparing the previous year, but now we'll compare to that strategic version or we'll compare to our best case version and see how our department level budgets are aligning with our best case scenario or our worst case scenario, for example. And we can be able to model out and see how we're going to be and what sort of um, directives we want to start giving out to the individual planners. And so, as I mentioned, we've completed a, a budget um, from our different departments that have been automatically mapped to a budgeted P&L where we can compare to a six plus six forecast. Uh, we're in September now, so maybe a nine plus three would be a little bit more relevant, as well as the actuals to date for September um, being compared. And so as our teams are completing their individual sales budgets, their department budgets, HR budgets, they all can all be mapped um, accordingly and updated real time here. And so you know a lot of things that come uh, to play here is when we've created an initial budget and we want to revise that budget, but we want to keep this budget as a um, as a tool to align with and look back on. So what we can very quickly do is we can just add a version here that will come through. And we'll copy. We want to copy the existing budget and we'll bring it to a budget revised. So by running this process, we'll be able to um, have this version come through and copy over to our budget. So now I can compare the two just uh, to show you that we've been able to um, copy over that information. So our budget is now matching our budget revised. And we can re-kick off things like workflows where it automates emails out to the individual planners. And they'll be able to enter in their data for only the areas that they have security to. And we'll be able to audit, monitor, and track and have some approval processes with that. And so I've updated uh, the budget revised to have copied the budget. And now we'll jump into the shoes of 
one of our sales planners who are responsible for planning their sales bottom up. And so we'll see that what they had entered in their budget is now here within their budget revised section for their specific uh, customer segments and their specific articles, legal entity, as many filters as you need to have your business tick and operate efficiently are available there. And so we can come in here and make some changes. But what we want to do is just show off just another great feature that Jedox brings to the table here, which is going to be our Excel add-in. It's giving you the flexibility to have your planners uh, operate in an environment that they're most comfortable with. And so what we have here is we have our budget version. It's just a saved report through the Jedox add-in. We could edit the view, create new views, and have those saved. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change this from our budget version to our budget revised version so that we can make some changes um, based on our flow here. So our budget revised, we'll select that one here. We'll hit OK. Should be the same numbers because we copied it over. And what we can do here is actually do our planning and not just reporting, but we can do our planning from the Excel add-in as well. So what I'll do is I'll make a big change here uh, for our product group five. Let's just make this uh, 100,000 units. So just by entering 100,000 here, it's updated in this uh, in Excel, and it's also updated in Jedox as well. As it refreshes, we see this is now shifted to 100,000 units. And of course, that's going to update our gross revenue automatically, and it's going to flow through to our budgeted P&L. Um, in real time here. So now we have our budget revised at 130 million compared to our initial budget of 110 million. And so very quickly, it's not just going to update our account mappings uh, within our P&L structure here, which of course can be customized to your business case, but we can see those updates in our finance dashboard as well as we switch between our budget our, to our budget revised, comparing those to our worst case. Uh, to our best case. And as you see, the updates we've made are more closely aligned with our best case scenario now. So now we've had this top level strategic versions, those uh, best, worst, and strategic, but we also have our operational ones that we're very easily able to do, um, send out the necessary templates to our planners, allow them to make those updates, um, have it tracked and monitored, and have it all update real time. So in the course of about maybe five to 10 minutes, we've been able to build out four different scenarios uh, very quickly, leveraging our integration capabilities of pulling in your actuals um, to different initiatives or different uh, planning templates and make those uh, individual updates as well. Um, and so this hopefully was a very kind of high level overview of the ways that you could scenario plan both on an ad hoc level or as a kind of department level roll up, see the automations between the different data sets and how you're able to start planning more efficiently, report more efficiently um, and make better decisions. And so what I'll do here is I'll pass the screen back to Kevin, where we'll uh, kind of summarize what we've seen so far, have a few poll questions and have some uh, time for Q&A. Thank you, Taylor. Great demo as always. Uh, if you have any questions for Taylor uh, about the demo, there is a questions and chat uh, screen on the GoToWebinar uh, toolbar, so feel free to uh, input any questions there. And, uh, and we'll get those answered for you. Uh, so I hope everybody can see my screen here. Um, as, as Taylor alluded to, Jedox empowers customers to achieve a culture of decisiveness. And it starts with these three pillars. You can simplify collaborative cross-organizational planning for even the most complex businesses, applying driver-based scenarios, utilizing practical AI and other modern technologies, you can create a unified plan and single source of truth based on comprehensive financial and operational data, linking processes, people, and data from all parts of your organization, and you will gain value fast and grow step-by-step -step according to your needs, as Jedox is the world's most adaptable planning and performance management platform, enabling what seemed to be impossible. Um, With the Jedox platform, finance is no longer in isolation. 
this slide represents the many ways that your business or organization can benefit from our integrated business platform and extended financial planning and analysis. Jetox allows the business to scale according to your needs and desired timing. And I know this slide might seem a little uh, overwhelming, but most of our customers start by simply automating management reporting and forecasting the P&L. And then they are quickly uh, able to add additional use cases as you see here on the screen once the most uh, painful processes are fixed. Jetox has thousands of customers, so this is really just a, a small sample of companies and organizations, large and small, who have achieved strategic and operational value through our solution. From Summit Education, which automated 70% of its reporting, to Clean Seas, C Suite, collaborating and gaining insights from self service and ad hoc reporting, Jetox drives efficiency and effectiveness in the organizations that we serve. And ultimately, we help our, all of our customers achieve a culture of decisiveness. Uh, if you would like to hear more uh, about, let's say, other customers that we have that are similar to your business or your size of organization, please ask us in the comments. We'll be happy to share and follow up with you uh, after the webinar. And so how does Jetox power confident decision making? You can see an example of our no-code drag and drop dashboarding in the animation on the right. The Jetox solution delivers value through a combination of our platform, which allows you to model any number of specific business requirements via our enterprise-ready platform infused with AI and Excel-like user experience, powerful data integration capabilities with really any data source, ERP, CRM, uh, human capital management tools, HR tools, et cetera. We also have best practice best practice accelerators, which are adaptable out of the box templates that will guide you in configuring the interface and business drivers that impact strategic and operational planning, budgeting, forecasting, and uh, even consolidations. And we also have adaptable configurations and, and efficient implementations for ongoing transformation that will be tailored to your needs. Through our no-code, out-of-the-box, best practice accelerators, Jetox customers achieve very quick time to value. These will speed up configuration and are really easy to understand and adopt. In about four to six weeks, most companies achieve their first value realization and establish more autonomy and self-service. Again, if you have any questions on, uh, on our out-of-the-box best practices, or uh, quick implementations, feel free to ask in the comments or follow up with us following the webinar. Okay, one more poll for everybody. And now that we're getting to, towards the end of the, the webinar, uh, do you see the potential to revise your budget more often now? Yes, absolutely, still not sure, uh, or no? And so we will pop up this poll here for everybody here in one second. All right, um, so it looks like some uh, decent feedback from the um, poll here and from what we were able to see for those who said yes, absolutely. Um, I, uh, I challenge you to reach out to uh, one of our team members here um, to schedule a demo where we can dive into this a little bit more. Um, same thing for the not sure and the nose. Um, we were very quick today on today's uh, demonstration where, you know, hopefully we can get you on a more um, interactive uh, demo where we can then have questions and answer your follow-ups and uh, align with your processes better, where we um, take a look at your templates and adjust, um, you know, our planning screens as necessary. Excellent. Thank you, Taylor.
All right, so that is the end of our webinar. If you have any questions on how to get started, please feel free to ask us in the comments or follow up with us after the webinar. Uh, let's pause for a few minutes. I think we do have some questions in the chat to answer now, and then we can follow up with everybody uh, following uh, the webinar here. So let's scroll through some of these questions. Uh, Taylor, does Jetox uh, support um, mobile devices? Yes, uh, we su we uh, support not just the viewing of your data, but also the entering and budgeting of your data. Um, all the screens you saw today could be accessible on the web, uh, or sorry, mobile, to fit any screen um, by auto adjusting there. So um, you won't have any issues with that. Um, and so you'll be able to access and update data wherever you have access to. Great, thank you. Uh, here's another one for you, Taylor. Uh, are there any limitations on the number of versions that you can create or scenario planning? Uh, there is no limit uh, to the number of scenarios you want to create. Um, we have the ability to control the number of versions you'd like to create so that you don't have too many um, and so you can centralize that process, but you do have the ability to add as many as you'd like. Great. And we've got a few more questions. I think that we have some time because we finished a little bit uh, a little bit early. Um, Jorge Douglas asks, if you want to compare two scenarios side by side, uh, can you do that and, and how could you do that? Yes, um, Kevin, since we have time, uh, do you want to let me share my screen again um, and I can sh I can visually represent that as well? Absolutely. So um, I'll show this a few ways. Um, so just in the finance dashboard, we're doing comparing systems right now with our budget revised to our best case. Uh, but we can also do that uh, in an ad hoc view as well. So I'm opening up the Excel uh, template we saw where I'm just going to edit this view. And it's going to be very familiar to a pivot table. So perhaps we want to look at our budget compared to our budget revised within the columns. So I can just select the versions I want to take a look at and drag them over here, select OK, and select Paste. And now we have our 2024 budget versus our, bu our budget revised here. And we could then, of course, enter and manipulate the data. So uh, just a few ways to, one, do it within a planning report just by adjusting it um, in a very native way to what you're probably used to now, kind of pivot table-esque. But then also our reports are designed to allow you to pivot from uh, version to version. Great, thank you. Uh, Aiden Rodriguez asking if we have customers in the steel transformation industry. We do, uh, and I will send you a note uh, personally, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, and uh, let you know of which customers we do have in the steel industry, but we do we do have some, uh, and hopefully you are familiar with them. Um, Taylor, another question is, which software does, uh, does it integrate to? Can you touch on our, our integration capabilities? Yes, uh, so I'll do that now. Um, we can connect to um, everything under the sun, essentially. Um, so let me just go into this overview screen here where we can take a look at the summaries. We have over 50 connectors. Um, one of our differentiators is that our integration capabilities are native to the tool. We do not use a third party. So REST APIs, SQL databases, flat files, CVS files, uh, or CSV files, sorry, um, SQL, like I mentioned, Access, um, SAP, all of the big players. We also have smart connectors down here below with a lot of predefined fields that allow for quicker implementations and easier adjustments um, after go live. And then, like I mentioned, our standard office integrations is not only to Excel, but also PowerPoint and Word. So maybe you're building out a PowerPoint or a board report and you want to just update that with the you know, most up-to-date information, you only need to build it once and it will update and refresh automatically. So 
Um, our integration capabilities are best in breed. We have over 50 connectors um, in addition to some smart connectors as well. And Taylor, John McGuire asks, was the dashboard in your demo built uh, in our uh, Canvas uh, technology? Yes, it was, as well as um, the strategic planning screen as well. So uh, not just a reporting tool, but a, a way to enable you to create some more user-friendly, um, visually appealing planning templates as well. Great. And we have a couple more, so let's get through just a few more and then we can follow up with everybody else. Um, a question, here's a two-parter, Taylor. Uh, do we have audit trail functionality and then also uh, our Excel-like interface? Can you apply things like VLOOKUP and other, uh, other Excel functions? Uh, yes, can you repeat the first question again, sir? Yeah, do we have, do we have audit trail capability? Yes, yes, we do. Um, so I'll just navigate back to that sales report here. Um, we have a few different ways uh, or things that you can audit. Uh, of course, we could audit and we could see who um, made changes uh, to the different information. So uh, right now, I just created this. So just I changed the value. I replaced it a time and date stamp. Um, our workflow capabilities have the ability to track and monitor and have approval processes. Um, within the software and then um, if you want to pop in as a more of an administrator we have an administrator section where you can run audit uh, audits on all of your cubes your rules um, and user information related to updating numbers and then so the second part of the question um, around excel if uh, vlookups and uh, calculations work yes uh, so we'll do something very simple here um, where we could just, you know, do a quick calculation here to get a unit price percentage here of 222. Um, so you can use this information. You can copy and paste this information into existing templates. They're all readable uh, to the kind of native uh, Excel components with not only your formulas, but also your charts and then the other things you want to add uh, with, Jet, uh, with Excel. Great. All right, last one. We, we do have some, some really good questions here. Um, Taylor, uh, since the budget revised would be made uh, editable, uh, so let's say sales directors could enter their updated budget, uh, but would the original budget be locked uh, if you can edit the budget revised? Yes. Um, you have the ability to lock down your versions ad hoc if you like, but also natively within our workflow, once someone's entered their information, it can be locked down and, um, and it can be locked down through the approval process and reopened if it's been rejected or needed some revisions. Great. And Last one, uh, does Jedox provide training on how to develop those dashboards in your demo, Taylor? Do, you, do folks need to rely on Jedox consultants to create those uh, for customers? Great question. Um, so during an implementation, you will go through training and have a train the trainer approach where we are, our consultants are uh, not only building these things with you, but also giving you the tools to build them on your own. And then natively within the software, um, as we saw in Excel, um, if you're in the Office of Finance, you are probably pretty good in Excel, so we don't take those tools away from you. Um, a lot of our report building is going to be very Excel-like, as we saw with the pivot table type functionality here. Um, and then with our Canvas and our dashboards, it's all going to be drag and drop uh, with some native components to build KPIs just by selecting uh, what uh, products, what uh, versions you want to look at. So um, the learning curve, and I used to be an implementation consultant for some other tools um, in the industry, um, is uh, very noticeable about how easy it is to use for finance users. It's designed to be owned by the finance team after go live. So the kind of iceberg cost, the implementation support that is required with a lot of other tools is not going to be as high with Jedox. We, of course, are there to assist you when you, uh, when you need it, but it is designed to be owned by your team um, with minimal training. 
Great. Thank you. And there are a few other questions that we haven't gotten to. We promise to follow up with everybody who has asked a question and make sure we get those questions answered. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. If you'd like a more custom demo uh, from Taylor uh, and myself, we'd be more than happy to schedule some time with you and, uh, and show you a more custom demo and understand uh, your requirements and, and your, your business needs. Uh, and make sure we give you uh, a demo tailored to uh, to those. So thank you uh, everybody so much for joining this morning. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the demo and, and the webinar. We will follow up with everybody who has asked a question that we didn't get to. Uh, and we hope to hear from everybody soon. So thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will be in touch.